Joe Thompson here. Uh, we're in the shop today, and I'm, I'm here with my very dear friend, Shane. He's a uh, super duper plumber, and we're gonna be building today a backflow cage. This is the start of it. Uh, it's gonna have a three by three tube that he's eventually gonna fill with concrete. We're gonna essentially make a cage that he can then put over the backflow device. But this is the start of it. We're making the two sides, and then we're gonna stand it up three-dimensionally, and then add all the sheet metal and build the lid. So we'll go ahead and do that. So the way that we kind of go about doing most fabrication is to fabricate two-dimensionally as much as we can. So we're building the two side frames, three by three tube, three by three tube. We've got some trim angle two by two here that'll receive the uh, sheet metal. Same thing here. We're not notching or anything like that. We're just applying angle on top of angle. But this is again the start. We've got the, our, our tubing here, angle iron here, angle iron here. This forms the rough frame. In the next step, we'll go ahead and stand it up. So we're at the point of essentially three-dimensional fabrication. We've made our two sides. We've cut out our spreader elements exactly the same length. I've blocked off the table about 12 inches so I can get these little telescoping kind of guides to allow us to square up, to make this perpendicular so that we have a 90 degree relationship here and here. And if we cut the spreader elements the same length, we can be pretty much guaranteed that we're going to be perpendicular. So I've got no clamps here. I'll just weight this down and just do a couple of quick tacks. We uh, have clamps here and here, here and here, and we're just going to carefully weld this off. Then it'll be ready for the sheet metal. This is kind of how I do three-dimensional fabrication. Do two-dimensional fabrication for as far as you can with all the little components, all the little elements, and then stand it up. Is where the, the basic structure is welded up and now we're going to go ahead and put in the rails for the lid the lid will be made out of uh, one inch square tubing with a 16 gauge top so we're going to shim up above here one and three sixteenths so we'll be able to slide the lid along the rails and then we've got our stop back here we didn't bother to miter any of these we did soften the edges a little bit this is the little purchase cap that we'll use. And when Shane goes to install this over the back row, he'll fill this with concrete and then cap it nice and neat. So the next step is to tack in the rail system, measure for the lid. We'll hold the uh, lid one eighth of an inch off on each side, flush it out with the front as measured from here, because we're gonna have to have the lock set here. And then Shane and Ray are gonna go ahead and start shearing all the parts. Whenever you have a project and you've got parts coming out of a sheet, you want to make sure you've got a good sequence on the cutting of the parts because you may do it in such a way that you run out of sheet metal to finish the job. So we're at the point where we've taken our measurements for our lid from the rail system. We're about an eighth of an inch on each side and about an eighth or three sixteenths in on this dimension. We want to have to support the lid two of these cross members. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about how to quickly find this space here equally. So what I normally do is I take the pickets, two, three, four, whatever. I can place them to this side. And I can measure from here to this edge right there. And then the calculation is pretty easy. I'm going to take 31 and a half here, divide it by 3, to get 10 and a half, and that is the space between the pickets, each one, and the edge, the last tube on each side. So if I measure 10 and a half here, I've got 10 and a half, and I measure 10 and a half from here to here, I should have 10 and a half here. So it's a quick way to measure that. If you have to work with great accuracy, normally I'll switch to the metric tape so that I can be working in millimeters and the math divides out uh, a little bit easier. But this way we have the lid, we have two cross members equally spaced. I'm gonna go ahead and weld it off and then we'll continue with the sheet metal portion of the project. So now I'm gonna weld this all up and I'm gonna uh, weld these outside corners first and then I'll weld across the top. Notice I've got the door blocked away from my uh, square by an inch and a half everywhere. That allows me 
to get right in here, and I've got enough space here where I can make this outside corner weld both here, both here, and here. If I was hard against my stop, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, weld this up. We'll get ready to put the sheet metal on. So this is going to go on. This is just a little handle, so I'm going to bend it 90. So this is our little handle, and I want to make a little radius on these corners. So I'm going to come in on the belt grinder at 45, turn and turn, turn and turn, and quickly make two radii. Show you how I do that. This will be my first cut at 45 degrees. And I'll eyeball what that dimension is, turn it over, do the same thing. And now I've got two starter. I'll, I'll grind the tips off, radius it, be done with it. So I'm almost there with three separate cuts. I'll lift this up and then I'll blend it in. And now we have a really nice, soft little handle that's not going to cut your hands. Okay, eyes. What we want to do is bend this plate right about there at 90 degrees so it'll present like that. We'll have a little reinforcement plate here and that's how we'll lock the lid. Yeah. 